Hi, hello, and welcome or welcome back to PJs and Pages. I'm Danielle, and today I'm going to be talking about my annotating system. So um, for those of you who have watched my videos before, you've noticed that some of my books, I do annotate them. And today I wanna talk about how I go about doing that, what supplies I use, what exactly I'm annotating, because it is a question I get asked often, both in person and online. Um, and I thought it would just be best to explain it in this video. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Um, we're gonna talk about, first of all, why annotate? So. I am an extremely fast reader and I always have been. Um, and annotating I found gives me a way to kind of slow down and really process what I'm reading um, and forces me to kind of, you know, evaluate the things that I'm reading. So for example, I take, I take the time to actually make predictions about things and um, analyze literary devices that are being used. Um, I'm also very interested in becoming a writer. And so I use other writers' books as a tool to learn the craft of writing. So I will annotate things about that as well. Um, so basically that's why I annotate, to slow down, really consider what it is that I'm reading, take a look at how it's being written to learn the craft of writing, and just to, you know, Sometimes it's just nice to look back at things that you've noticed, lines that just meant a lot to you, things like that. So without much further ado, let's go ahead and look at the supplies that I use because I am a very minimalist um, annotator. I know there are annotators out there who have pens and highlighters galore. They use different like tabbing systems for things. And while I do use pens, highlighters, and tabs, it's extremely minimal. I use the exact same pen, highlighter, and tabs for every single book. There is no color coding except for, like color coding to the, I have a color coding system, but there's no color coding for like making it look aesthetic to my books. It's not about aesthetics for me, it is about function. So first of all, most important, if I have nothing else, it is a pen. Any pen will do. I, I've been known to not have this pen with me and I will use a cheap Bic ballpoint pen that you can get at a dollar store, like any pen will do. Um, but this is my favorite to use and it is the, I don't know if you can see it, it is the Uniball, what is it? Jetstream, Uni Jetstream 3 in 0.5 and it's got black, red, and blue ink in it. So I do if I have the ability to use these three different colored inks, I will use them. Um, otherwise, I just use a blue pen, really. I prefer a blue pen over a black pen just so that I can see very clearly where my highlighting are if I'm flipping through and I forgot to bring tabs with me and I can't find them. So first step, a pen. Then if I'm feeling real extra, I get a highlighter. It does not have to be this highlighter. This is a fancy like mild liner. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, the zebra mild liners are great. Don't get me wrong. Oh, my bird just flew by my face. Okay. Um, fancy mild liners are great and they are a great brand, but they're expensive. You can go to the dollar store and pick up a pack of highlighters and those will work just fine. And I will go over what it is that I highlight in just a moment. And then the last thing that I use is a set of tabs. And I use these because you can get them at Walmart, Target, Amazon, anywhere. Honestly, like the cheapest tabs that you can find, they always come in these five colors. So I made it work for me because for me, it was about how cheap it was gonna be since I was gonna be annotating a lot. Um, so yeah, and each of those five colors has a different meaning. So now that we know what supplies I use, let's talk about exactly what is being annotated. So I do have a system with my pens. Um, when I'm using three different colors, red is where I what I use to highlight like quotes that I love. Um, and I'll put like a little heart next to them usually. Um, so quotes that I love. Blue is for basically everything else. Theme related things, notes about characters, all of that. The black I use usually when the blue runs out <laughs> or um, honestly just when I'm making predictions, sometimes I just do those in black because I don't want them to be super visible in case someone else is trying to read the book as well. So 
blue, black, and red. That's how I use them. The highlighter. The highlighter I use if it's the like second or third time that I'm reading the book. And I will use that to highlight quotes that I like. So that way they really stand out when I'm flipping through, especially if I'm going to be sharing those quotes in a video. So, um, which I haven't done yet, but stay tuned. I'm sure they will come up and you'll see highlighting in all my books. So highlighting things that I want to share. I'll share on social media, things like that highlighter. And honestly, usually I just use like a Sharpie yellow highlighter. Exactly. Now, the really interesting part is my tabbing system. So I actually started with just tabbing. I wouldn't, didn't write in my, well, that's not true because I underlined. I would underline passages, but I didn't write notes. So I used tabs and um, it took me a while to develop a system that really worked for me. And if you're starting on your annotating journey, I think it's going to take you a while to develop a system that works for you because the tabs are really personal. This is the part where you decide what it is you're annotating for. Um, for me, that was analyzing themes and remembering details about books and writing styles. But for some people, it's just about like what character said what, like, um, favorite quotes from different people, uh, things that, are recurring in other books. I, I don't know, honestly, because I'm not those other people. But for me, it is these things. So for me, I've got pink, orange, yellow, green, and blue. I use the exact same colors every single time I annotate to make it easier on myself. The pink color I use for quotes that I love in anything romance. Um, if it's got romance in it, I love it. I love romance. So I tab things that are romantic. Yeah, and quotes that I love because pink love. It makes sense. It makes sense in my head. Um, but yeah, so when I'm flipping through, if it's just parts that I love, I won't underline the whole part. I'll just tab the page. Um, if it's a quote that I love, I will underline it or highlight it and then tab it. And then if it is parts about romance, I just tab the page as well. I don't underline anything. It's just to mark where romance sections, sections are. So when I'm flipping quickly through it and I'm looking just for a quote, I can flip to the quickly to the tabs and see if there's a quote there or not. Next up is the orange tab. The orange tab I use for all things writing related. So like I said, I am interested in the way that writers actually write. Um, so anything that has to do with writing style, especially if I'm reviewing a book, I also want to notate the writing style when I'm reviewing a book because some writing styles are for some people and some are, it's not. So point of view, like what kind of point of view are they using? How many different character point of views there are? Important literary devices that are being utilized. That's more for me. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So let me see if I can find a book where I've got that going on. The way their writing feels also, like here I talk about how the writing feels creates a very surreal feeling. And then here I have just a little, just a little like, oh my God, it won't zoom. There we go. Um, a little smiley, happy, laughing face because it was just, it was a witty way to write. Things like that. Let me see. The way that dialogue is written. Yeah, that's character development type things. That's what I do with um, the orange tabs. Next, yellow. So the yellow tabs are, whoop, yellow tabs. So the yellow tabs I use for any notes, like just random thoughts that I have about what I'm writing, reading. I'll underline that passage, tab it yellow, and I will write down what I'm thinking at that moment in time if it spurred a thought like, oh, that reminds me of this, or I don't know, mostly that. It's honestly mostly that. So yellow is for things like random notes, and then um, I also use it when I'm making predictions because that's kind of something that snaps into my head. Um, so I will use the yellow for predictions. I will, I'll underline what happened and then write my prediction in the margins and tab it with a yellow tabby. And that brings us to the green tabby. The green tabby is um, more for me, but also when I'm reviewing a book, talking about the themes that come up in the book. So um, themes, tropes, things like that. I will tab in green and I will write the themes and any notes about the themes in the margins. Um, 
So I will give some examples of that when I go over how I use them in the books in just a minute. And then the last tab is the blue tab. And the blue tab is actually more for me and that is to remember important plot details. So like, especially when I'm reading fantasy or sci-fi, notating um, world building and magic systems, like details that you have to remember for later on in the book, I will tab those. Um, where new characters come in, if I think that they're gonna be important characters, I tab them. And also like, Anywhere there's like a plot twist or something like that, I will tab that as well. If I'm reading a, a thriller or a mystery, I will tab places where I think there are red herrings or clues, um, things like that. So blue tabs are for important plot points and information regarding the plots. So that is my five tab system. Those are the only five tabs I use when I am reading a book. Um, I have gone through lots of trial and error trying to figure out what I really do want to tab, what I'm really looking for when I'm reading. Um, I'm going to show you one, two, three, four books today where I utilize those, where showing you how I came up with the system and how I utilize it now. But it was many books in the making. Like we're talking probably hundreds of books in the making. So um, we will start with one of the first books I annotated, which was Station Eleven by um, Emily St. John Mandel. This is a phenomenal book, by the way, if you haven't read it. But basically, if you look through this book, you will see I started by highlighting my favorite, my favorite quotes, highlighting my favorite quotes. And then I read it a second time. Actually, no, did I start with that? Yes, I did. I started with highlighting. That's all I did. I wasn't comfortable writing in the margins yet. And then I started getting more confident. And on my second read, on my second read, ooh, why won't it look? On my second read around, I actually started writing in the margins because there's a lot of themes that this book covered. So I just using a black pen, nothing fancy. I started writing in the margins themes and questions um, about the book. So like here, I there was someone who had tattoos and I asked, what do the knife and tattoos represent? Because it doesn't ever explain it. Um, and then I... I went ahead and started putting in like little, oh my gosh, blah, 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 blah. Also, it's interesting. And just like little reflections about what I was reading. And it's not, it's very sparse. And notice there's no tabs in this book, which is why it makes it really hard. I probably need to do a reread of this and actually tab it. Because what I found, and this is one of the books where I found it, was that when I was making annotations, I couldn't find my annotations afterwards. So it was lovely for me to slow down and actually think about what I was reading. And that worked perfectly for this. But when I want to go back and review the book in a bookstagram or booktube format, I would have no way of finding the notes that I made besides flipping through and taking hours to find them. So tabs are where I realized that was going to be really vital. Um, and so I started tabbing and you will see here I have so many tabs and some of that is because this was a great book um, where the crawdads sing by Delia Owens I know there's lots of controversy about it I really enjoyed it I haven't watched the movie yet need to do that but um, I did read it I read it twice actually once all the way through and then once to annotate it um, and yeah I had a do I have a five tab system here one two three four five. yeah I actually used a five tab system but I tabbed a lot and you will see that my tab system is different I actually have a code here that I used and it is that the pink was gonna be love and beautiful orange was predictions and notes this like or yellow was prediction and notes this lime green color was character development Themes and discussion points were the blue and the important stuff like plot points and things like that um, were in purple. And I actually used all of these colors quite a bit, which means I tabbed constantly throughout this thing. I really did annotate the heck out of this. And then at the front, you will actually see 
I added a giant post-it note and I actually started writing the themes on a giant post-it note. And I actually do do that with book club books a lot. I'll just kind of, while I'm annotating, I pull out the, the I have examples of the theme in post-its and underlines, but at the front of the book, I'll add a post-it note with a list of the themes. So that way, when I am going to go review a book, I have them right there easily accessible and I don't have to flip too much. But essentially, this is what an annotated page looked like. Very simple, just some underlining, a little bit of text written here. Um, and then you can see I've got character, what was that? Character development notes here. There must be something about Kaya and Tate happening here that meant something. This was obviously a part that I loved or it has to do with their romance. And there was important things happening on this page, clearly. I would have to look at the annotations really closely to be able to tell, but yeah. Three tabs to a page. I don't normally do that. That This was at the beginning of my annotating phase and it was extensive. Um, here you'll see I've got, I actually wrote a note on the tab coming, coming of age. Um, and then I have a passage here that I highlight, or that I, not highlighted, I underlined. Um, and then little, I write little notes to myself. Oh my gosh, I love Tate kind of things in the margins. Just because, like I said, I'm trying to interact with the text. I'm trying to slow down my reading and really process what it is that I'm doing. Um, so this is an example of one of my earlier writing yeah it's kind of nice to go back it's almost like a journal when you've annotated a book like sorry i got distracted by my own thoughts because i you know it's it's like looking at a journal of your thoughts for a book that you read and loved um so that was my annotations of where the crawdad sings and by the time i got to the house in the cerulean sea i had developed my system i no longer have a key at the front of the books there's no key I just started annotating um, and here you can see I use, oh, I did use red. I, um, I also use the red ink. Let me see, can I get it to focus? Okay, so red ink, if I, there's a new word, um, I, I, I underline it in red and I write the definition in the margins because language learning is important. You can always learn something new um, and I love that. So. It gets, it, it, I don't, I don't like tab new words. I just underline them and write them in the margins. Um, but here's an example of me underlining a thematic thing, something about prejudice. And I tabbed it in green. I wrote in the margins about the theme and underline the example of where I see it in the text. And you'll notice now that I am yeah, so this is about Linus's character. If you know the story of um, the house in the Cerulean Sea, Linus is one of the main characters. This is part of his character development. I tapped it in orange. Um, and let's see, a blue tab. A blue tab. Here's a, a, note, a letter that came from the Department of Magical charge of magical youth. Um, so I tabbed that because I figured I might have to go back to it at some point. Um, and yeah, I, there's nothing highlighted. It's just there. Um, here you'll see, I do this a lot where I ask myself questions at the end of a chapter and I'll tab my questions, um, because it'll be questions, predictions, things like that. So, um, yeah, questions and predictions that I have. And let's see some quotes. So here you'll see, this is quotes that I love. I underline them in red and I just tab them. Um, this one I didn't even underline. It was just a part that made me happy. Like I said, the, the romantic parts make me happy. I put a little smiley face in the margins and I tabbed it pink. It's very simple, it's very quick. Here you can see I use two different pens, a red pen and a blue pen, red pen to highlight and underline something, a quote that I love and the blue pen for the theme. And this is where it differs from where the crawdad sings. Here I was 
tabbing everything. And here I'm conserving my tabs a little more. I already tabbed the page. I know there's something important on it. Theme is always important to me. So I just tabbed it with the green one and I just highlighted with the red. And that's why I use the different colors because then it's so easy for me to flip through and find a red underlining anywhere. So that is my tabbing system and how I'm using it. Um, and you will find that in some of my books, I don't use all the colors. Or there will be some books like The House in the Cerulean Sea where I use all the colors, but there will be books like thrillers that don't really have, um, they don't really have a lot of lines that I love. Pink, they don't really have a lot of necessarily themes. So they don't use a lot of green. Um, thrillers, I'm not really interested in writing a thriller. Um, so I don't use a lot of the orange tabs because I'm not analyzing the writing too hard. A couple here and there, but other than that, not really. So for example, with those, I have a lot of tabs left over and I save them for when I have a book that does use those tabs. So um, this is Magic Lessons by Alice Hoffman. It is the third book in the Practical Magic series and it's a prequel to pa Practical Magic. Um, and essentially this one, I knew that I wasn't going to be tabbing important like plot points, magic systems or anything like that because it doesn't have anything like that. So I wasn't gonna be using the blue and I wasn't gonna be predicting anything because I wanted this all to just like, this is a magical realism, literary fiction, women fic thing. And I just wanted to experience it. I didn't wanna question anything. I didn't wanna predict. Um, so I wasn't going to use, be using blue or yellow. I only used pink, green, and um, orange because I really love Alice Hoffman's writing. So I wanted to really analyze her writing style on this. There were so many quotes that I loved. I used so much pink. And there are so many themes explored in this book. So I really used heavily the green tabs. Um, and then in a... So when I used the tabs up for this one... I actually do make a key and I did love and quotes for pink writing style and connections to the previous books because this is this is part of a series so that's part of her writing style is going into things that happened in the previous books and then themes is green so I did actually put a thing in there because I'm not using it the exact same way that I normally use it. Um, I will adjust. Um, same thing with thrillers. I don't have a thriller on me because I usually donate those because I'm not going to read them again. Um, but I will basically use blue and yellow exclusively with thrillers just to mark where plot twists happen, important like clues I think are coming up, and then predictions that I have and notes that I have about characters. Um, I will use the orange tabs a little bit when I'm when I see character development stuff happen, but other than that, not really. Um, so I will save my post-its, the ones that are left over, for future books that are going to be only using that. And that is it. That is my annotating system and how it came to be the way that it is. So if you have any questions that I was not able to answer in this video, please go ahead and leave them in the comments down below. I really appreciate you watching and your interest, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!